and girls, I'm Miss Christy from southernflight.com and I'm so excited to read you another story today. Before we get started, can you wave at me? Thank you so much. It's so good to get to spend time with you. Today's story is a really neat one that I dug up. It's hard to find this book anymore. It's called The Salamander Room by Ann Mazur. And this is going to be fun. Have you ever had a pet salamander? I used to have pet newts when I was little. I loved them. I would let them crawl on my hands, and sometimes they would ride on my shoulder, and we'd walk to the house. <laughs> we had a good time. Okay, ready? Here we go. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me, Brian said, and he took the salamander home. Where will he sleep? his mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing to him sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. Well Brian's got this all figured out, doesn't he? Sounds like a pretty good setup. And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. That's quite the setup, isn't it? Looks like a pretty good salamander home. He will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends to play with him. Well, Brian's just got this all figured out, don't he? They will be hungry. What will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room, and every day I will catch them and feed the salamanders, and I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. He just got a little salamander sanctuary going on there. The insects will multiply, and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. Ooh, Brian hadn't thought of that. Oh, actually he has. <laughs> I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects, and the bullfrogs will eat them too. This room's getting kind of crowded with insects and boulders and leaves and salamanders and bullfrogs and birds. Hmm. Where will the birds and bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. So now Brian has trees in his room too. So he's got insects, bullfrogs, trees, birds, salamanders, boulders, puddles of water. Wow. <laughs> birds need to fly. She has a point there, doesn't she? We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but when they come back to my room, they'll come back to my room when it's time for dinner because they know the biggest, juiciest insects are here. Oh my goodness, we're going to take the ceiling off the house now, right? But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof and the sun too, and vines will creep up the walls of my room, and ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing on the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. Mercy, mercy, mercy. That is quite a room. I think he's kind of living in the forest now, isn't he? And you, where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the moon with the stars shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing. Next to me on the boulder with its head resting on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. The end. Mercy! <laughs> On second thought, I don't think we need to get salamanders. <laughs> there are ways to keep them in your room without taking the ceiling off and bringing in moss and ferns and bullfrogs and insects and 
and birds and all that other stuff. But wow, Brian has a wonderful imagination. And I bet salamanders would really love it if they could do all that. But in the end, I don't think our mamas will let us, do you? <laughs> That was a fun story. Thank you so much for letting me read to you. I love you very much. And don't forget, if you want, this. let's see, this is March of 2013. Um, right now, I also have a storyline you can call, and I put a new story on it every single week. It's 256-270-0270. And there's no special charges. You just have to pay for a call to somebody in Alabama, which is what you're doing. You're calling the Alabama number. So, most people have cell phones, and that would be free long distance. <laughs> so I would love for you to get to call me or my mother, record a story every week, and put it up there sometimes Sunday evening or Monday morning. I love you very much. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.